Thank you, everyone. I'm sure we've had a very spirited debate, more spirit on some sides than others, but <laughs> it's happened. And again, we want to thank everyone here for arranging this and bringing us out here because this has been a great experience, especially in your highly organized subway systems. Um, I want to start with a quote from a great French historian, whose name I won't say unless you take him out of your curriculum and also because I can't pronounce it. But, and it's I think particularly relevant given the second speech, second speech is theme. The American and side opposition's mentality that they were solely responsible for winning the war is born out of a childlike <coughs> belief that winning wars is a matter of machines and not tactics and hearts and courage. And I think, as ludicrous as it sounds, the French brought all of that, if not the machines. What I want to talk about is, and what I want to bring the debate back to is, what does it take to win a war? Is it, as side opposition would have you believe, merely size, or is it more than that? What does it take to defeat an enemy? What does it take to break the Nazis? And I think that it's clear they don't understand subtlety, given they missed the question in Dan's subtly worded question. But aside from that and other ad hominem attacks, I think what you'll see is, sure, we may seem like the ragtag band here, and you may seem like the polished group, but we'll bring the intelligence. The, the military kind, that is, I mean. No, the military intelligence. The, need, the ones needed for the tactics for this battle. Yeah, that must have been it. The reality of the situation is, if you really listen to their speeches, what they bring time and again is, look at history. The Americans were much larger. The Americans fought much harder. There were just more of us. We had bigger tanks. The French had none of this. And the truth is, that all of it's true. But if that's the matter, then the USSR had even more of all of that. That many other places had exactly these things. That the British, Canadians, and other Commonwealth states combined could also provide exactly this offensive material. Why is it that the Americans, and this is something, a subtle point they missed from Jim's speech, largely because they don't deal with any of the subtle points we bring out, why is it that the Americans took so long to engage in the Western Front? Why did they trapeze through Northern Africa, make a jaunt to Corsica, stop in Italy before they ever went to Normandy? It's because they lacked the tactics, the intelligence, the things which they needed to gather slowly from French reports. No. I think that you've had your chance to respond to these arguments, and you failed to do so. Why is it that they took so long to do this? We see that, uh, <laughs> we'll take you in a bit. Why is it that, why is it that they missed Dan's argument about how it was necessary to figure out where exactly to deploy the forces? Why we made a last minute switch from Calais to Normandy? Why is it that we knew to go to Normandy instead of the other place? Why is it that the Germans didn't know this? It's because of all the intelligence we <coughs> provided. Of I'll take you, sure. Uh, by the beginning of 1944, the British had cracked the Enigma machine and effectively they could read every coded German message. Yeah, yeah. So do you think they truly needed the French intelligence? Yeah, I think yeah, that at the yeah, end of the day, yeah. another subtle point which they seem to miss is that intelligence isn't the only thing that comes over radio cables, because if it were, you'd be absolutely right, right? That the British could have had all the intelligence, but why did they wait? Because the intelligence that really mattered in this was the personal <coughs> intelligence game, right? Was collaborators, or was resistors finding out what collaborators were doing? Right? It was exactly the sort of information that you couldn't gather over cables through satellite photos, largely because you couldn't fly that many planes over France and have them return effectively. Right? The reason why we waited is because there was all sorts of information, all sorts of information we couldn't gather effectively and we needed to wait for. For you to say the British had figured out a way to break code is not the same as saying, and the argument you need to make is the British did not need French information, and I wait for you to make that claim. But more than that, we talk about the sabotage that was critical. Not just because it actually was one of the, uh, when Eisenhower looked back on Normandy, he said it was surprisingly easier than they thought. And this wasn't because the Americans were more trained than they thought, it's because the French had laid out the entire groundwork. What was the sabotage they conducted from the resistance through the end of 44? They destroyed the fuel depots, they attacked road traffic, they did things like, sorry, they did things like attack uh, the rail lines, right? Six city attacks on rail lines a day, just on rail lines, right? These are all things that made it much harder for the Germans to attack. These are, but even more than that, why is it that the Germans were spread so thin throughout all of France, right? Why is it they couldn't concentrate their forces? In fact, when they started the war, right, they only kept the north and figured the Vichy government could handle the rest of the country. The reason they spread out was because of the acts of sabotage and the acts of resistance taking place. At the end of the day, we don't need to believe the myth that every, Fran every Frenchman was a resistor. What we do need to believe is that the reasons the Germans were in such a weak position was because there was a resistance to begin with. But, you know, I'll take you, sure. Uh, you've been talking a lot about the Russians. Don't you think that the reason they were so spread out was effectively the Russian army? No, I think that... What I'm talking about is why is it that it was so easy for the U.S. to invade within France itself? Why were they spread in France? 
Why is it, and this is important, right? Why is it that the U.S. really wasn't all that critical? Why is it that the Germans as a whole were largely weak? Because of the point Dan brings up, which is that the U.S. has already been advancing the whole time. At the end of the day, it's one thing to say the Americans had lots of military might. It's another to consider where was even the distribution of that might, right? Most of it was in the Pacific theater. At the end of the day, if the only thing your side has going for it is Americans were quite large and our tanks were quite shiny, that's not what it takes to win a war. Though, it is what makes for good war movies, right? At the end of the day, what it takes is the intangibles that no one on the American side could provide, that no one on the British and Canadian side could provide, and no one in the USSR could provide, right? That's why the USSR lost more men than the Americans put into the war at all, right? It's not about size, but it is about these tactics that matter. But finally, and this is the final subtle point, I'll stop, I'll stop on this, but the final subtle point that Ben brings up, which they never deal with, is we don't even need to believe any of the things I've said, though they are true, <laughs> that the saboteurs and the resistance is what won us the war. Because at the end of the day, what at least some of these Frenchmen did, the few mythical heroes you have, even if you were to contend that not many were, is they provided a symbol. They provided a rallying point and they provided a rallying cry. They published and had readerships. Each of these 300 newspapers had readerships of 2 million during the resistance, right? Each of these resistance newspapers. They rallied French colonies across North Africa, across the rest of the world to come to their defense. In fact, they provided an important rallying cry in America itself, which was unsure about engaging in the Pacific theater. Believe it or not, these Frenchmen provided us a reason to actually engage in our own war, right? That the casualties taken in island hopping was one reason we thought, you know, the USSR might pull through. Why is it that the U.S. even got involved? It's exactly because of this. At the end of the day, we provide the tactical intelligence necessary, we provide the military intelligence necessary, but finally, if nothing else, we provided the symbology needed for this to ever take place at all. We provide a rallying cry for you and you and all generations to come.